my darling friends, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to see you. If you are visiting for the first time, welcome. It's nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here today. on some really cute recycled or upcycled tin can projects. So if y'all have a whole bunch of tin cans in your recycle bin, don't toss them because you're going to need them for today's projects. We are going to be turning our tin can, our upcycled tin cans today into some darling little tin can pockets. And I'm very excited about this project because it's one of those that works up so easily. You can do it in a day and it's going to be so fun. And I also love that with this particular project, we can be as creative as we want to and just let our creativity flow and shine. So without further ado, let's get started on our projects for today. I love it when we can use upcycled products to turn into cute crafty projects. I have been wanting to make these tin can pockets for quite some time, so I'm very excited that we get to do this together today. So go get all your tin cans out of your recycle bin and let's create some fun tin can pockets. So we'll just start by cleaning all of our cans and then making sure both top and bottom have been removed so that um, we can easily smash them into our pockets. Next, we will take them out into the shop. And if you have a vise, this is by far the easiest way to do this. It can be done by hand though. If you don't have a vise, I will show you how to do this in just a couple minutes with a pair of pliers. So I stick my tin can in the vise about an eighth of the way down, maybe a quarter of the way down actually. <laughs> and then I just start tightening the vise up around it and it smashes the bottom half, half of the can and makes this really cute pocket. So here's what I did wrong on the very first one, right out of the gate, I made a mistake. I did not line up that back seam um, to the very back of my can. So on this, this one here, I'm gonna make sure that that seam is in the back rather than on the side of my tin can. This is probably the most satisfying project I think I've ever done. I love smashing these cans. <laughs> All right, y'all, so it definitely looks better to have um, that seam um, lined up in the center of the back rather than off to the side. If you don't have a vise, um, this can be done by hand. We're just gonna start by squeezing um, the bottom part of our tin can together with our hands first, and then when you get it, somewhat closed, you can take your pliers and continue smashing it until it is fully closed and all the gaps are gone. I will tell you though that using the pliers, you don't get as clean of a seam as you do when using the, um, the uh, vise. And so it does leave a little bit of crinkling and wrinkling on the bottom of this, but I think I've got a fun way that we can cover that up. To prepare our cans for um, the handles, I'm using just a really sharp screw, two size drill bits here, a smaller one and then a bigger one. And I'm using the screw to kind of start the, um, the little dimple in these tin cans because otherwise the drill bit will just try to walk across the tin can and you it'll kind of be a little bit of a disaster. Then I drill the smaller hole first and then come in with the bigger hole just because I don't want, um, by doing this it kind of prevents the, the um, tin can from getting like shards on it. So I'm just going to repeat this process to all of our tin cans on both sides of the can so that we can create some handles for these cute little tins. Now that we've prepared all of our tins um, with our handle um, holes, it's time to take them back in the studio and start 
painting them. And y'all, I, I wanted to keep things a little bit simple with this project, so I just decided to paint all of them the same color, and I am using chalk paint in the color sandstone here. But y'all, you do you, and you paint these any color that matches your um, your home decor. Like just You want it to, to suit your style. After I get them all painted, I did to put two coats of paint on each one of these as well. And after I get them painted, I decided to seal them with some clear um, antiquing wax. And actually, no, I'm sorry, this is not clear. I used white antiquing wax to seal them because I thought that white would just give a little extra depth and dimension, especially down in all the little grooves. And it is hard to see it on camera, but it did kind of enhance it a little bit. You can sort of see it here. The bottom one is the one I've sealed and the top one is unsealed. And I definitely like the way it looks with the, um, the wax on top. After I did that coat of wax, I came back in with some dark antiquing wax and went over these in just kind of really messy, haphazard way. And then I wipe it off with a cloth and I wipe it off pretty, pretty liberally too. I don't leave a whole lot of that antiquing glaze on the tin can. And I'm not doing this to all of them either. I kind of do different techniques to each one of these cans. like just that subtle um, hint of that antiquing glaze and I like how it was is a little bit darker down in the grooves it looks kind of cool all right for our next set I'm going to use some of this rub and buff in antique gold and I'm just going to take that rub and buff put a little teeny weeny dab because a little tiny bit of this stuff goes a long way and I'm just putting a teeny tiny dab on my finger and then just rubbing it over the section that has the grooves only I really love how this one turned out. I love how that antique gold just kind of gave it a little bit of shine and added some depth and dimension to our tin can. All right, for this set, I'm just going to come in with a very, very dry brush using some antiquing glaze and just kind of go over all of the edges and then dab a little bit inside the grooved areas as well. Now we get to do the super fun part. We get to start embellishing our little tin can pockets. And so I decided to break these up into three sets. So I'm gonna do one set that you could use for spring and summer, one set that we can use for fall, and one set that we can use for Christmas, just to give you guys a variety of ideas here. So I'm going to go ahead and use some wire, and this is 16 gauge wire that I'm using on these ones for the handles and I just string it through the holes and then kind of wrap the wire around the um, top portion to just kind of lock it into place. After um, I get it wrapped, I do cut off any excess wire and then come in with my flat pliers here and just press down any um, points of wire that might be sharp and pokey because we don't want to stab ourselves with them. And then I just fiddle with it a little bit to shape it to my desired shape. So I'm going to repeat that exact same process to our larger um, tin pocket here. For the handle on this one, rather than wrapping the wire around that top section, I decided to come in with a small paintbrush, wrap it around that to create like these little curly cues of sort. And I do apologize so much that I keep getting kept getting out of frame here. I must have had my camera set up weird or something. Anyway, so this is what the cute little curly cues look like, and I really think I like this particular style so much better than the wrap that we did on the smaller um, the smaller pocket. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and hot glue my floral foam into place. And y'all, sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the hot glue just melts the floral foam, but if you let it set up and cool, it will kind of hold into place. But I do think it's important to try to glue that into place because 
Um, it prevents your floral foam from falling out after we get all of our florals in it. Then I'm just going to take a variety of flowers that I had. Um, I have gotten these, collected these from many places, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Some of them even came from Dollar Tree. And I cut them all apart from the big stem that they came in. And then I just start filling this little pocket until I feel like it's really nice and full. As I'm filling this up, I do try to be very careful and pay close attention to making sure that I am getting all the floral foam covered and that none of it is peeking through. Doesn't this look so cute, y'all? I really love this. I just love how simple and just cute and sweet that it is. All right, let's embellish this just a little bit more. So we're gonna come in with some jute and I am stringing that jute around underneath my um, wire hanger just to kind of help hold that jute into place. And then I'm gonna tie it in a knot and at first I tied it in a knot and then a bow, but I didn't like the way the bow was sitting on top of it. It looked kind of bulky. So I just tied this in a knot, cut off my excess string, and then make a separate bow to glue on top of this. getting the bow positioned into place and letting the glue set up I did come in and cut off the little tails because I didn't like the way they were hanging off the bottom of the tin can <laughs> and oh gosh isn't it just so sweet y'all I really think this is darling all right, let's move on to embellishing our larger one. And I am just going to make this one um, a lot fuller than I did the first one. I think we'll go a little bit more intricate um, than we did our cute little miniature simple one. So I start by just adding in some fern. This is gonna be the base layer here. So I kind of add that fern all the way around um, three sides of the back. Make sure it's tucked into place really, really well. And then I will continue layering in just all kinds of greenery and florals. floral arrangements of any shape, any size, I do kind of have a few rules of thumb that I tend to follow. I always start with my base layer and that's usually um, a, a layer of like danglies or really tall stems and I try to keep the tall stems in the back and like I've done here I layered in the base layer with our fern leaves and then put some taller stems um, in front of those fern leaves but kept them behind the handle if that makes sense and then in front of the handle I just start layering in some smaller pieces um, just using greenery and some really simple flower petals. After getting um, the layers all in and getting the middle section of this floral arrangement kind of full and fluffy looking, I did decide to add a couple more fern leaves to the front of this just to add a little um, extra character to the front of the pocket. And I had a hard time getting these to stay into place. They didn't want to poke into that floral foam very well, so I decided to just go ahead and hot glue these ones down. For our jute um, embellishment here, I decided to wrap that jute cording through our cute little curly cues from the wire handle that we made. And that first one went through with no problem, but the second side was a little tighter. And so I just used a needle to string it through. And then to finish this off, I'm going to do the same thing, tie this jute into a 
tight knot and then add a cute little jute bow to the top of it. What do y'all think of these? I think this is a fun idea and it is a great way to utilize recycled materials. This came out really cute. I feel like you could use these in a lot of different places. You could use it um, as a leaner or you could use it as a filler in any of your vignettes. <laughs> very excited to do these ones for fall because fall is one of my favorite seasons okay so remember when I said I thought I had an idea for covering up our squished little part of the pocket here the one we used with the pliers on I decided it would be cute to just put a little wood trim on the bottom of that so I just cut these from some scrap trim that we had in the wood shop and then I'm just going to just simply hot glue them to the bottom of this and I think it works really well I mean you can still see a little bit of the wrinkling and crinkling in the tin can but I think it just gives this a lot of extra character You could also put some ribbon across the bottom of this to cover up some of the seams or you know just some fabric just get creative with it I think there's a lot of different ways you could cover up that bottom seam um, if if it's not as smooth as the you know as what we get with the um, vise all right now I'm very excited to um, embellish these with some fall picks and fall florals fall is one of my favorite seasons and I love decorating for fall I love creating fall DIYs and fall projects so for our little guy here, I just decided to keep it simple like I did with the spring one by just adding in a few little um, eucalyptus stems and there, these are all in the fall colors and I do believe I got these ones at Hobby Lobby. And then I'm just gonna come in with some pine cones and some acorns and just kind of fill it up until I feel like it all looks symmetrical and full. this is turning out so far it is looking so cute I did feel like it needed just a little bit more fall to it though so I added in this maple leaf to the back of it and then kind of thought well maybe we better put one to the front too to balance it out a little and I did have a little bit of a hard time getting this one to lay exactly the way I wanted it to but after fiddling with it a little I finally got it to lay right and I had to hot glue it into place a little bit but it's looking really cute so to finish this one off I'm just going to hot glue an acorn to the top of our maple leaf I am so happy with how this cute little guy turned out. I really love it. He is just so fun. <laughs> All right, let's get to work on our big pocket now. And for this one, I'm going to use a lot of mini sunflowers. And I got these sunflower picks at Michael's last year. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have them again this year. The last time I was there, they were just starting to put their fall things out, so I didn't really get to you know, get a good look at things, but hopefully they have them again this year because these are really neat stems. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill this whole thing on the outer perimeter with these fun mini sunflowers. Now it's time to add in a little bit of some taller pieces here, some taller stems. So I have these cute little um, orbs that I found. They're, 
they're like a they're kind of fuzzy and i just think they're so cute and i love the greenery on the end of them and actually i found these at dollar tree last year i don't know if they have them again this year but i bought a bunch of them last year because i thought they were so cute and i knew they would go really fast all right, so now we need to add in a couple of our maple leaves. So I'm just gonna glue some around the back and the front that just will kind of hang down over the tin pocket. looking good so far but we definitely need a few more embellishments so I'm gonna make a bow out of this really cute homespun fabric that I buy at Hobby Lobby and to add to the bow I thought it would be fun to make this cute little tag that just says fall on it and I'm just using my clickable stamps to stamp the word fall on it and this tag I did cut out of some actually it's actually printable fabric so um, it's pretty stiff so I thought it would make a great tag. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp my lettering onto this and then I will pin it onto the bow with just a cute crafty little safety pin. and hot glue this bow right onto the side of our tin. I decided I didn't want this to be completely centered. I thought it would look a little bit cute more off to the side. After that hot glue has set up, I do come in and trim the little tail ends of our bow. And y'all, what do we think? I think this is really cute. This is probably my favorite one so far. Um, I don't know, I just love fall. I love all things fall. So I really love how these turned out. really love Christmas projects and just the whole Christmas season so anytime I get to make a Christmas project or a Christmas craft it just makes my heart feel so happy <laughs> all right for this particular handle on this little guy I decided instead of doing just the plain old wire that it would be kind of fun to embellish this one with some beads so I connected one side first and got it held securely into place and then I will just start stringing it with all these teeny tiny little wooden beads and I do believe I got these on Amazon and I will try to have them linked um, below in the description box for y'all. exactly sure how long I wanted the handle on this one to be um, but I just kind of eyeballed it and in the end I thought oh we probably better add a couple more beads to this so I do add a couple more and then to hold this into place I do use the little curly Q method to secure that handle into place and y'all look how cute this is I really love the wooden handle it almost looks like a little tiny miniature purse <laughs> all right so I'm going to go ahead and start filling this one with some Christmas greenery and I'm just using Using these fun little Christmas pine boughs that um, I got these ones on Amazon and I will try to link these ones as well for y'all but I just go ahead and add three to the back and then I'm just gonna kind of do my little rule of thumb and add the taller things in the back and then go shorter as I move towards the front using these holly leaves and then I'll come in with some pine cones and some berries and just kind of fill this in until I feel like it looks full and happy Oh yeah, and I also add this really cute bottle brush Christmas tree to the whole ensemble. Thank you. 
to complete this little guy, I decided we needed a bow on the front. So I'm just adding some of this green homespun. It's the same as the fall one, only in the color green. And I do get this at Hobby Lobby. Then I strung a bell onto it and then just tied the little bow across the top of the bell, fluffed up, fluffed up the bow a little bit. Then I'm gonna hot glue it into place and trim up the tail ends. After I got the bow um, glued into place, I decided it needed just a little extra something something. So I found these cute little um, tin stars, rusty tin stars in my stash and just hot glued it to the front. And I feel like it really pulled the whole thing together. I love how this turned out. I don't know, I thought the fall ones were gonna be my favorite, but now the Christmas ones might very well be my favorite. <laughs> Let's start working on the larger tin. I'm just going to go ahead and um, create a wire hanger on this one, and I'm just using some black wire in 16 gauge. And because I like the little curly Q things so much, that's what I end up doing to this one as well. get the little curly cues made I do kind of squish it into place a little bit to give that um, hanger a good locking good lock down and then I um, squeeze in any of the pokey out wires with my flat pliers just so that nobody gets poked or scratched by it now we can start filling this up and for this one I'm going to use some of these um, pine boughs with the berries on them and I, at first I put them all in here with the pine cones on decided I didn't like it with the pine cones on so I took all the pine cones off of the pick and then you end up using them um, later as just some filler. needed just a little extra height in the back so I did come in with these extra pine boughs that are just a little bit taller and I do really feel like that that helped put some height in the back and give it a little bit of an extra that fun dimensional layered look to it and then in the front I come in with these really short smaller pine boughs kind of fill that in in a few little layers there until it gets kind of fluffy and then I'm going to add in this fun wire brush Christmas tree I have a bunch of these little mini ones and I think I got these on Amazon so I will also try to have those linked for you as well and at first I was going to try to put that in there with a little round base on it and it just wouldn't go so I pulled the round base off and then hot glued it into place and now I'm just going to come in and start hot gluing all of our pine cones in until it just looks full and fluffy. to tie all of this together I'm adding in some gold berries that just kind of um, tie in the gold rub and buff that we put on the front of our tin I just feel like it gave it a little extra splash of color and a little more pizzazz to this and then I'm going to go ahead and add a jute bow and I string it through the little curly clues curly cues just like we did on our previous pocket tie it in a knot but this time instead of cutting off those um, tails I leave them into place because I kind of want them behind our little um, homespun bow here that I tied a bell to and hot glued that on and then to finish this off I'm going to add all of these beautiful little rusty tin stars to the bottom cuff of our tin can pocket. just love this one and 
I, I can't decide which one's my favorite now because I really love the fall ones too, but I don't know. There's just something about this one that just calls my name. I really love this one. What do y'all think? my sweet friends. That is going to wrap up today's episode. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I really did. I had so much fun. I love how our little tin can pockets turned out. Each one of them has their own sweet personality and character, and they were just so fun to create. I would love to hear what you guys' thoughts are down in the comments below, and if this is a project that you think you will enjoy trying for yourself. time with y'all and love seeing your sweet faces here. So come back and see me again next week. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it when I just don't know what I'm going to say. Ay, ay, ay. The words, they just won't come. They're there. They're up here, but they just won't transfer from here to here. <laughs> Take 22 here. <laughs>